Okay, so in the previous video I set up this job. Uh, you can see the stock model is interfering with my display. I can't see the geometry I'm going to cut. So I have to click on the operation and click toggle display to, to get it to disappear. Then uh, I've got one other operation I have to do. The top plane is going to be my plane for this, but I have to set up a, a manual work offset of zero for this post. <coughs> that should uh, force it to output G54. Uh, now I, I select dynamic mill and we'll grab a uh, machining region for the first pocket and that's going to be this guy in this direction and we're going to grab a I mean I guess I could grab avoidance and make that a solid selection maybe let's see uh, edges faces or loops no, I'm not going to do that because that's not looking like it's giving me a, a, a click uh, menu option to grab a solid. So we'll, con we'll just contain this to the, uh, the block itself. And so if we select dynamic metal, we'll grab a tool, which we'll have to create. We'll be a flat end mill. 3 eighths and the uh, cutting length and stuff uh, works for the purposes of the video. Actually, uh, let's make this, uh, let me see, 7, 16, so we'll display the rest machining a little bit better. So, same, same concept. We're going to push this at uh, 300 SFM. We'll pretend this is steel and uh, we'll give it a, a feed of 1.5 per flute. It's a four flute end mill. We'll give it a uh, plunge rate of 100. We're not going to be plunging anyway. And a retract rate of uh, 150 and that's uh, all right that looks good so we'll go to cut parameters and for this part we'll make we'll, we'll attempt this thing at uh, yeah. let's see Maybe fifteen percent step over, and we'll leave eight thousand walls, and uh, we'll take this dock to nothing on the floors. The micro lift uh, distance of six thousandths, back feed rate of five hundred inches a minute. <coughs> And let me see, gap size retract, never, uh, never works for this geometry probably. What, what never means is that it'll, it'll uh, not retract because there are no boundaries to, to avoid here. So we're gonna go to entry motion and the plunge angle of two degrees, the helix radius of, uh, 0.25 probably works for this. Linking parameters, you gotta get this depth. So we'll give it top of stock will be absolute zero. Depth will be absolute. We click the bottom of the pocket. Uh, our retract will give it 0.100 absolute. And our feed plane will give it 0.0 five absolute for planes 
uh, tab tab works for this and uh, arc filtering we've got six thousand stock so making this half of that makes sense <clears throat> Coolant, we're going to apply flood and uh, we'll see what happens with that. So, the, so this built the toolpath and uh, that gets us our, our first uh, toolpath. We can drag our stock model below, I think. Copy, paste. So if we drag our stock model below now and we grab a source operation and we click that, this will update. And then if we view it, turn off the part and, and view that. That's a little hard to see. Let me see. View on shaded wireframe. I don't know. Yeah, so I guess uh, display isn't the best on this with this color combination. But at any rate, you can see the stock model updated. So uh, at this point, we'll copy and we will uh, paste in. Uh, the, the toolpath will get our model displayed again so that we can uh, edit this to take the second pocket and so what we're going to do is we're just going to change the machining region um, read chain all We'll grab that guy. And what you can see is we, uh, oh, we needed to update our linking parameters. So linking parameters for this one, top of stock is the floor of the first pocket. The depth is the floor of the second pocket. And, uh, I think I'm going to make the feed plane uh, negative four hundred fifty thousandths. So we're 50 thou above the floor of the first pocket when we uh, feed. And then we'll update parameters on our stock model, which is below. Control click. Add the operation, rebuild, and let's take a look at that and see we've got rest machining stock in the corners. Right here, there, there. And so this was a 187.5 corner. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this path, we're gonna copy, paste below, and we're going to uh, change the tool I'm going to create a tool, flat end mill. It'll be a quarter inch. And we're going to give it 330 SFM. And we'll give it 1000 per tooth. And the Plunge of 50, retract to 150, finish. So we're going to grab that, make sure that's selected. And you know, and, it, and for whatever reason, it gave me the feeds of, uh, this doesn't really make sense. Let me see. I'm going to click out of that once and I'm going to go back into it and see if it actually is, ah, well, 
That's interesting. I, I've got SFM from the, uh, it was replying from the other tool. So I gotta override this. One thou per tooth. Actually, we forgot to uh, engage on these other two, and, and this will be interesting. Let's look at a runtime for in back plot for the path. We got six minutes, 53 seconds. Uh, and if we go in here and we engage radial chip thinning, uh, we'll take a look at that. And also, our SFM is probably weaker than we could we could actually get away with running. We could probably run that at 400. Uh, but but we, we whack some time by just engaging our radial chip thinning factor on the path. So make sure you do that, like I forgot to do. And so, uh, this in this path, I'm sorry, this is a major point. Uh, we want to go to stock rest material from uh, one other operation, in this case, we're only taking that second guy. And, and then watch this rebuild. See how we're only clearing the stock in the corners? This is rust machining in the 2D mill toolpath. And now we can update our stock model. Shut off our uh, model and, and, oh, whoops. Now we can update our stock model and nothing will happen because we didn't uh, reselect the source operation. So now with the source operation reselected, I've got my stock removed. I've got my 6,000 wall stock. Now I need, uh, in conjunction with these, uh, you know, in fact, what I, what I could have done is finish this, this path up here. So what I can do is uh, copy, damn it, copy, paste below, Turn this path into a toolpath dynamic contour, and uh, I'm sorry. We'll we will take the uh, cut parameters to zero on the walls, and let's just take a look at how that path came in and out, and was that safe? We'll get it from the top. So I'm off the wall. When I come in and we finish the walls with that path. And that saves a little time. I mean, this isn't terribly efficient. We're at like 23 minutes at this point or something. Uh, then all we want to check is uh, maybe, maybe how we're getting there. Uh, so we've got uh, one one five feet per tooth. We might want to lean off that to like a one one for a for a finish. And uh, we also want to tilt and and make sure that uh, well, let's look at this. It'd be nice to see this part in uh, wireframe. So if we go to the view menu, wireframe. Okay, we're arcing down into the part, so that that that's safe motion. We're not flooring the end mill at any high rate of speed. Uh, so now what I need to do is take this quarter inch path, uh, copy, and we will paste it below. And, and sometimes you click on this menu and it brings up this uh, simulator. So I paste this path in, and what we're going to do is we're going to drop the rest material and drop the feed to like uh, six tenths, and we're going to change the toolpath type to dynamic contour 2D, rebuild, and then we're going to take our stock model 
finally. And I don't know why, but I'm having trouble. Oh, okay. Getting the parameters. So go to source operations. We're going to control click the two remaining operations. And take a look at our model. Okay, I, I didn't uh, remove wall stock from the uh, 2D contour. So here we have a machined uh, pocket and that was using Dynamic 2D with Rust machining. Uh, hope that helps. I mean, I, I didn't even know this tool existed. Uh, you know, they're a little light on supporting material. This month, actually, there's a, a MasterCam University is available for free. So I encourage you guys to get out there. Uh, but I, I was actually in an interview with a guy. And he showed me that... Uh, stock rest material option and the ability to recognize what's remaining from another toolpath. So uh, that felt kind of stupid at that moment. Anyway, thanks guys. Hope this helps. Well, the next video we're going to, we're going to do, uh, we're going to attempt dynamic to the opti rough. Uh, now that path is more of a pain in the ass. So no, no promises.